Welcome to the webinar. Hopefully everyone is going to uh, be on board and we're going to get um, some good commentary flowing. We're probably going to go back and forth uh, with commentary through the webinar, through the PowerPoint presentation uh, as everyone gets on board. So as we're waiting for people to hop on board, I uh, usually like to uh, tell a story or make a point or something along those lines. So uh, what I want to do right now is just sort of include you on the past few weeks of me doing research and the frustration I found in doing so. And what I'm talking about is I started to look at and backtrack um, critique of vegan diet, critique of what the health, critique of forks over knives, uh, yada, yada, yada. And it was dumbfounding to me what I ended up having to witness and having to listen to. And uh, Andy, you can chime in as well. But um, long story short, I kept coming through uh, these podcasts and lectures that would have in the, in the title, Debunking What the Health debunking fork over knives and i'm listening to this stuff and they didn't debunk anything basically they just wanted to stick their thumbs in their mouths and say we don't want to hear all this stuff so we're going to disagree with it and that so much didn't bother me although i have a very low tolerance for ignorance that's something i got to work on i don't suffer fools too well but all of the commentary to popular podcasts like joe rogan with the gazillion following, it is clear, crystal clear, this guy has no education or background in nutrition at all. He just didn't like the message, so kill the messenger. Um, and they're saying stuff that's outright ludicrous, that has no bearing on anything, and they didn't debunk anything. Now, the giants of uh, vegetarian, vegan diet industry T. Colin Campbell, Caldwell Esselstyn, Michael Greger, Neil Bernard, uh, Garth Davis, John McDougall. I haven't seen a single one of them make an argument without evidence-based research, uh, peer-reviewed research to back it up. And yet none of these podcasts slash whatever debunkers of these guys offered anything even remotely close uh, to peer-reviewed research in response. It was just basically, we don't like your message because we want to eat hot dogs and hamburgers. And uh, so we're going to disagree. And what bothers me is, again, the tribal nature of their following. You go, man. You totally debunked these, these vegans. Didn't debunk anything. All they basically said was, we don't like your message and it's brainwashing, which is what this webinar is going to be all about. And it, I'm, I'm flabbergasted at the level of stupidity out there that people, again, they just want to hear good news about their bad habits and they want to line up behind people, especially popular people who will just say stuff with no background at all. And yet they demand background out of the people they're criticizing. Take it away, buddy. Yeah, I, I <clears throat> excuse me. I, I don't get the mentality either. Um, I, I was going to say people always want good news about their bad habits, right? But um it it, it it dumbfounds me sometimes that, that people take actually take offense to your dietary choices right so um I, well, that, i'm a non I, i'm a non-smoker I, I i don't smoke um i don't at the same time i don't go up to people smoking in the street and start lecturing them on the dangers of smoking <laughs> like it doesn't make any sense for me to you know it, being a vegan we're not um i think people ought automatically assume that we're we're being judgmental of of you if, if you're not a vegan right so we're I, I think people assume that we're we're you know it, it's right versus wrong we're, we're calling them wrong um, well, we're gonna we're gonna get into that That's yeah but, but um, my, it, my, it just continues on on a lot of these podcasts right where it's just my preamble my preamble wasn't about like, that's what we're going to get into right now. But yeah. my preamble was about the nonsense that passes for discord when one side is presenting peer reviewed research and the other side is just twisting words and saying, we don't agree. And then they have an equal following. It is just mind boggling to me 
uh, when the intelligence and the stuff is right there, which is what convinced you and I to go vegan yeah. to begin how, with. How could you not agree with facts? It's not, it's not an opinion. <laughs> these are, these but are the scientific. Other side, the other side is just opinion. And yeah, that's, well, that's, that's, that's the, the thing, right? Part. So but they won't uh, admit folks, that. I'm going to bring folks' comments in as we go along. So uh, Andy already knows I'm going to bring him in and out of the conversation so you guys can follow along on the research. So uh, Andy, I'll put you in the lobby for a second. And uh, just, yeah, everybody's jumping on board, saying hello, all good stuff. Um, yeah, uh, boom. So I'm going to um, get going on here and I'm going to uh, bring a lecture into the podcast and then hopefully you guys can see it and I'll bring Andy back uh, from time to time. So, uh, and I'll, and I'll stop to uh, take your comments as well. So um, the topic here, like I mentioned, vegans versus angry and or offended omnivores. Um, I first apologize to my fellow uh, vegans and vegetarians. I should have done this webinar way before I did the one about militant vegans uh, because angry and defensive omnivores have been far more hostile and resistant than the militant vegans we've encountered. I have encountered only a few militant vegans, but I've encountered plenty of people who are resistant to uh, the whole argument of the vegan uh, transition of Andy and myself and so many others. But listen, this isn't about conversion therapy. Nobody's trying to uh, convert you into anything. Um, and that's what boggles my mind. And, and the reason I, I will tell you about that um, is because of what people ask me to do. And I'll, and I'll get to that in a second. And I welcome your comments as we go along. But let's do some definitions like I did with the militant veganism definitions. First of all, let's define anger, a strong negative emotion, usually with a target and having a sense of being wronged defensive, a level of anxious emotion in connection to personal challenge and or avoiding criticism, boom, in relation to how our choices to go vegan somehow is an insult to people who choose not to, and hostile, unkind, bitter, unsympathetic, rancorous, venomous, etc. As you can see, has a lot to do uh, similarities with the definition of militant that I offered last week in terms of militant veganism. The people who are playing uh, offended, you know, about um, our choices to go vegan, even though they ask for the evidence, um, again, uh, is relatively uh, mind boggling, uh, considering what we're presenting. So, I mean, uh, Ann just had people private message her, Andy's had clients of mine message him, I don't want to go vegan. Uh, he's my coach. What am I going to do? No one's trying to convert anybody into anything. So, uh, you know, don't get your panties in a notch uh, over something that we haven't even said yet. But the truth is meat eaters have been just as offensive and even more ridiculous than the militant vegans we've encountered. Why is that? Now, I offered last week a definition of militant. Let me offer a definition this time of passionate. Passionate meaning a strong emotion tied to an investment in something you believe in strongly. As you can see, this is a far different uh, definition than the definition of militant that I used last week. So being passionate and presenting your message and research as to why you are passionate about this particular topic or any particular topic, wearing t-shirts and hats be as a reflection of that passion, that is a lot different uh, than being militant. So um, very, very important. Uh, I'll, I'll just finish this slide and then I'm going to bring Andy back in uh, to talk about some other stuff. But uh, if you're following along here, you know, the heading of this slide, look, vegans should just shut up already. Well, my four plus decades long business success in this business was built on having a passion and letting that passion guide me and speaking out about it. How come that's fine for diet, for working out, for metabolism knowledge, for weight loss, for writing books, for transforming bodies and lives, but we should just shut up already about the vegan diet. Look, if you don't like the conversation and you don't want to learn, then 
you have the free choice to change the channel, but you can't have it both ways. And what I'm saying here is when I first made the breaking, breaking vegan announcement and Andy came uh, as well at the same time, people asked me to post why I went vegan and why it's better. Uh, and then when I post and share all these reasons of why it's better, because the research is overwhelming, then people report that they're now feeling preached to. Well, that's no different than my books and webinars on metabolism, training principles. Last week when I talked about the aerobic myth of fat loss and, and introduced the research. So this is proving once again, people say they want the truth. But as the movie line classic goes, you can't handle the truth. So I don't make my clients go vegan. I'm nobody's food Nazi. That's not how I work. But what you need to ask yourself, some of you listening, is why are you so threatened by being educated about this particular topic, like the Joe Rogans, et cetera, et cetera, who, who want to just ignore the mountains and mountains of, of information that's out there. So Andy, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring Andy back in. And uh, just pause here, and I'll get some of your comments as well. Um, so uh, go ahead, buddy. Are you back with me? I'm going to uh, shrink this down here so people can uh, see you. And, and Yeah, I mean, I, I uh, obviously agree with, with everything you just said. Um, it, uh, it, 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 it actually kind of surprised me, though, too, like when uh, – when I first became a vegan, just, just because, I mean, yeah, you, you definitely get blowback from, from omnivores. Uh, just, I mean, I'm, I'm not against anything. I've, I've eaten meat for 35 years. I'm not, I'm just, I'm only for, uh, an entirely plant-based whole food diet. Right. So I'm not, I'm not against, uh, people eating meat. I mean, I, I realize people only hear what they want to hear. Um, and they will search, they will search those answers uh, by any means necessary, right? So they'll, I mean, you could do a Google search and find, you know, the benefits of a, an all meat consumption and, and, uh, and people would. That's a particularly would... frustrating thing, I think, is people, like I said in the previous slide, they say they want the truth, but they want their version of it, which is yeah. an entirely different thing. So, um, so that, you know, that's important thing for people to muddle through. So. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and people need to understand that as well. So uh, I'm going to uh, get back to the lecture and then I'll bring you back in. So, um, yeah, let me just uh, get that back up here. So what I'm getting at, again, I'll just shrink my big fat head down so you guys can see the lecture here. So, uh, so that was my point on that, running into people who just – they wanted the evidence, and then when I present the evidence, well, we don't want to hear it. One of the um, sad things for me is I scheduled over two months' worth of research on my Facebook post uh, with research backing up plant-based choices, vegan diet, for metabolism, for health, for cancer prevention, yada, yada. And for someone with 27,000, 28,000 followers, I'm getting seven, eight likes, no shares. People won't share because they say they don't want to offend any of their friends by sharing this kind of stuff. That's how ignorance gets spread. That's how the misinformation of the Joe Rogans, et cetera, gets spread around uh, when people are so afraid of being judged by just sharing something that other people can benefit from. But listen, when it comes to eating meat, this slide is really important. So let us explain a little something here. I understand about denial and about compartmentalization, and I'll give you two examples. But what I don't understand is the hostility attached to it. So I'll give you two examples in terms of uh, vegan versus omnivore. So I've been eating meat for years and years and years until recently. And way back when, when I was in social work, one of my favorite jobs that I had is I was a life skills counselor for community corrections. And what my job entailed was long-term offenders, convicts, ex-convicts, who were getting released from prison after very long prison sentences, would have to come and see me and learn how to integrate themselves back into society. They, you know, I taught them things, shopping, banking, um, things you would take for granted, how to get up for work, how to have a job. So obviously i also had to reach out to the community and find people uh, places of employment and as you can imagine uh, a lot of people were hesitant to hire ex-convicts 
um, who were low on life skills and really couldn't do well on job interviews. So one of the places I could find them jobs was in slaughterhouses. And initially on, um, I was uh, visiting a slaughterhouse for fowl, for turkey, et cetera, et cetera. Especially around Thanksgiving time, they would hire a lot of the people that I represented because of me, not because of their job skills or, or job interview skills. But I had to tour the slaughter factory. And um, let's just say it's an image you never forget. So I saw these live turkeys from live to hanging upside down on a hook to having their throat slit um, to being uh, defeathered, et cetera, et cetera, to being what you see on your Thanksgiving plate. And that goes back to the early 90s. And that wasn't enough to convince me to, to go vegan. Um, so I understand denial and compartmentalization. Another example I can give you is 2009. I've used this example before. I was uh, in Europe, going around Europe. And I can't remember if it was Barcelona or if it was Croatia, but uh, my ex-wife and I were at an authentic um, European market. And I mean, really authentic. So it was a very, very long, really cool market, open-ended market with tents, etc. So we, we, we decided we would walk all the way up uh, one stretch of the street and then all the way back to make sure we saw all the different uh, merchants and tents, etc. We stopped by this one merchant. They had figs, they had macadamia nuts, they had, it was just awesome. Um, but they also had a, a goat tied to a rope. And this goat was just personality times 10. He had two weird blue colored eyes and he was making all kinds of noise. And you could feed him some grain, but he would nip you in the butt if you got close to him and just made everybody laugh. And people would take pictures with him, et cetera, et cetera. So being completely naive, we continued our journey through the market, but on the way back, instead of that goat on a rope, that goat was now hanging upside down with its throat slit, with the blood dripping into a bucket because apparently people even bought the blood and he was completely skinned. Like there was no fur left on him, on his skull, on his eyes, nothing. Um, so within an hour or two, uh, that's what we witnessed. And it led to my ex-wife deciding to go vegetarian right there on the spot. She didn't say, well, we're on vacation. It's inconvenient. I'll consider it when I got home. The image was so strong and powerful to her that vacation or not for another two or three weeks through Europe, that was it. No more uh, animal flesh for her having witnessed that. And yet it wasn't, still wasn't enough for me uh, to go vegan myself, even though I witnessed the exact same things uh, with the exact same eyes, uh, it wasn't enough to convince me. So this is a long way of saying we get it. Like we get why people want to stick to a belief system um, when when you when you see that and hear that. So what I get to now is that we've made that choice. Andy and I have made that choice based on the overwhelming research that any intelligent person who's combing through the research, how do you not make that choice now? So what we don't get is how a choice that I make is an insult to you if you don't make the same choice. How is that insulting? How are you somehow offended that I've gone vegan? Um, how is using the word vegan an implied insult at someone because you're not vegan? Um, vegan shaming is silly. Omnivore shaming is silly. But that doesn't mean you don't present the arguments and the research. I do it with training. I do it with exercise science. And yes, some people are offended, but they're not offended in the same way. It's getting to the point of ridiculousness where the old line at social parties where you don't know anyone, never talk politics and never talk religion. And it seems like now we have to add diet uh, to, that, uh, to that agenda as well. Um, so look, we get it. Um, I have over 50 years of eating animal flesh. So we relate to people's reluctant to change, but that doesn't mean staying ignorant to the realities and the research. Uh, and that's where I get a little confounded about the resistance that we run into. So bringing Andy back into the conversation, um, cause I know he's got uh, something to share on that as well. So um, you had personal experience with yeah. uh, 
Go ahead. Actually, my yeah, my my brother's actually been a vegan for uh, ten years now, or maybe more. Um, I always respected uh, his decision to do that. I, I you know I was never like, oh, you're a vegan. That's that's stupid. It always actually, uh, you know, it, it, it really intrigued me. Actually, I, I never really, you know, made made a switch over until recently because I, I just assumed being in the fitness industry that I needed to be eating animal protein, right, to to maintain my physique. Um, now that I've been a vegan, I mean, it's only been two months, but um, I'm certainly leaner than I was and um, maintaining all the muscle I had. So, um, you know. It, it's going really well so far. Feel and great. We, and we still get all those questions. I even got one this morning. It seems to be a consistent one. I got one yesterday on Instagram. Well, where's your protein coming from? I'm like, yeah. wow. I mean, we forget how, how. Well, we it's so drilled into people. Yeah. yeah. It's just drilled into people. So, yeah. We, oh, I need protein. I need protein. And I mean, studies on, on high protein diets are, are not, are not very good. <laughs> High animal protein diets. I mean, it, uh, there's just so many that you look at it, and it's just like, wow. Like, and yeah, we'll get. How we'll am get, I still alive? <laughs> we'll get to some of that. Let me get to some comments. Matt's just saying how he's a scientific researcher came to the same conclusion that we have after seeing the overwhelming evidence, and it really is overwhelming, Matt. So good point. Yeah. I applaud your decision. I was also a huge hunter, but rarely go anymore. And I think we should point out as well. As much as this topic, I, I wanted to make, me personally, wanted to make, I think I was a little unfair with the webinar about militant veganism, um, and I wanted to balance that out with just as uh, irrational the reaction from meat eaters. So that's what this webinar is for, but make no mistake, I've had a majority of clients writing me wanting to be like a Me Too movement. Hey, can I get on board this plant-based thing? Can I, you know, can... Can can we you know can you adjust my diet? I really I want to dive in, uh, you know. So um, so that's important. I think that we point that out. And then uh, Chunye is just saying, I had the opposite reaction when you first mentioned vegan vegetarian. I was adverse to the idea. Exactly why we're doing this one. Uh, but because it came from someone I respect, I asked myself to be open minded, see what you have to say. Now it uh, all makes sense, and I actually love not feeling pressure to eat tons of meat anymore to meet my protein needs. I wonder if people who are defensive are just leaving things at the initial gut reaction without willingness to look further. Of course they are, uh, Chun Yi, that, that's what this is all about. The research is overwhelming in every single element of the vegan argument, including protein needs. As a matter of fact, uh, when blood tests were drawn, the albumin levels of the vegans was higher than the vegetarians, lacto-ovo, and higher than the omnivores. So, uh, in other words, the available protein to use to build and rebuild tissue was actually better in the vegans. Um, and I'm not sure if that's the research I included uh, down below or not, but um, we're going to get to some research here as well. So, uh, but it's important we got to that. I mean, so here I was with in your face reasons to go vegan. And at the time I was able to deny and comp compartmentalize because I was more about the research, whereas my ex-wife was more taken by the shock and awe of what she just witnessed. So I think there's two elements there, but I I'm a lot like Matt when it came to the academic you know, before all we had was liars in the nutrition book industry, right? We had Atkins, low carb lies on the politics of profit. I've lectured on several times paleo, which has been completely debunked. Um, but now these, uh, I don't want to call them vegan researchers because they're academics uh, who have arrived at a conclusion from the research that they've either accumulated or they've done themselves. But um, now they're stepping forward, Esselton, Grieger, uh, you know, all of them, Bernard, I mean, goes on and on and on, right? Uh, John McDougall, Garth Davis. Um, so that's what, uh, I mean, I didn't have to be convinced when you say you're someone who respects academic um, qualified preponderance of evidence, then you follow where that takes you. So, um, you know, I'm going to get back to the lecture. I'm uh, Lydia's just saying... Uh, she made the switch after coming across all the research evidence, much of what I believed up until then has pretty much gone out the window. I can't ignore the findings of the whole food plant-based experts. 
Exactly. If someone's open-minded enough, there's really only one conclusion you can draw. And that's why it boggled my mind when I wasted a lot of the last two weeks researching those who were advertising that they had debunked the whole food plant-based movement. And you listen to them and it was nonsense. There was no debunking involved. There was just a lot of like, I don't want to hear this message and I'm going to disagree with it because, uh, and, and people like Joe Rogan just illustrated in their so-called arguments, their complete lack of uh, education and information on the subject, which they were squawking about. And that that's what bothers me the most about social media, have a following and say outrageous things with no scientific acumen or conclusion at all. And that's what really ticks me off. Um, I, I was telling Andy the other day about that as well on famous bodybuilder talking about insulin sensitivity and having no <laughs> clue what he was talking about. As a matter of fact, was saying the exact opposite of the research, offered no yeah. research or anything, just, you know, I got 20 inch arms. So listen to me kind of stuff. So nice. I'm going to get back to the lecture and uh, bring Andy back in uh, shortly. So let me get back to that. Um, and I welcome your comments, folks. So just uh, keep them coming. Um, so again, uh, it's not like we don't understand. It's just we come at the conclusion um, from a different level. So very, very important. So uh, what I want to say here is emotion is weak in this and objectivity is strong. Remember, I started this out by defining uh, what defensiveness is. Now we can look at other examples. T. Colin Campbell grew up on a dairy farm. His formative years where imprints are the strongest, had more, uh, he had more emotional reason to, to protect his belief system than anyone. Yet he was objective enough 50 years as an academic uh, researcher searching for the truth um, he used that to let the research speak for what it was, and he let the research guide his choices. It wasn't some kind of religious conversion, just a choice to not live in and with denial. So once again, let's address the sweeping and overwhelming research as to why. Without denial, without emotion, without defensiveness, let's just look at some of the most uh, popular research uh, that's out there. I'll go through a couple slides and I will bring uh, Andy back into the conversation as well. So I'm going to forgot to shrink myself there. So hopefully you guys can see that. Um, so, yeah, you think of someone whose formative years are on a dairy farm where how his family fed the family, you would be invested in a belief system of sticking with that no matter what. And yet T. Colin Campbell is a pure uh, academic uh, researcher, and he went through hell uh, as being the first coming to the conclusions he came to. He was, you know, sort of uh, ostracized amongst the academics because he wasn't playing ball with the meat and dairy industry. Uh, that's a uh, conversation for another time. But let's look at the truth bombs of the research, and then I'll welcome some more comments. But vegans are healthier. Vegans are leaner. This is one of the things I don't get with people who write me who say they want to lose weight and forever lose the weight. Well, um, sometime they want to be that that to be on their own terms rather than what the research says. So vegans are leaner by far. And that's in Modern Nutrition and Health and Disease. I think you can probably see that book behind me on the chair there, a 3,000 page textbook, one of the best ever written. Um, and there's a whole uh, chapter in there about vegetarianism and then it's spread also throughout the book on various other topics like vitamins and protein needs and you know life cycle and all those things so there's at least four or five hundred pages where vegetarian stuff is mentioned but the truth bomb there vegans are healthier vegans are leaner they are not deprived of vitamins minerals and protein all right let's look at some of it so hopefully you can see this this is from, if you see my cursor, the Journal of American Dietetic Association, all right? And I left the, uh, there you can see up here on the right, if you want to copy and paste that in the comment section later, uh, this is just more proof. It's the position of the American Dietetic Association that appropriate planned vegetarian diets, including total vegetarian or vegan diets, are healthful, nutritionally adequate, and may provide health benefits in the prevention and treatment of certain diseases. 
Well-planned vegetarian diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, adolescence, and for athletes. All right, and then it goes through a few uh, definitions. And then uh, down here, the results of an evidence-based review showed that a vegetarian diet is associated with lower risk of death from ischemic heart disease. Vegetarians also appear to have lower, low-density lipoprotein uh, cholesterol levels, lower blood pressure, and lower rates of hypertension and type 2 diabetes than non-vegetarians. Furthermore, vegetarians tend to have a lower body mass index and lower cancer rates. All right. So, uh, okay, features of a vegetarian diet that may reduce risk of chronic disease include lower intakes of saturated fat and cholesterol. Where do they come from? animal protein, animal sources, higher intakes of fruit, vegetables, whole grains, uh, blah, blah, blah. But the lower body mass index, you want to get lean, go vegan, go plant-based. Um, and then, you know, you don't have to fight a good fight because it's probably just going to happen. So by the way, that previous slide, as you see up here, the heading on this slide, the American Dietetics Association in the previous slide is the largest organization of nutrition researchers and professionals in the world. All right, boom, eat that Joe Rogan. What organization is Joe Rogan part of that argues on behalf of eating animal fats and animal proteins? So let's look at the disease prevention. Um, curses, uh, you know, Carcinogenic elements of consumption of red meat and processed meat, a review of scientific news since the uh, decision was made. This is from the Food Chemical Toxicology Journal. In October 2015, issued a press release on the results, the evaluation of uh, carcinogenic effects of red meat, processed meat, based on the accumulated scientific literature, the consumption of red meat was classified as probably cancer causing the humans and processed meat as definitely carcinogenic or cancer causing to humans. Uh, given the importance of this topic, they talk about future studies and what they should aim at. Uh, most importantly, uh, uh, you'll see down here, it says, however, a number of gaps still exist. That doesn't mean gaps in those conclusions, as some of the meat eaters want to say. It means gaps in finding the reason why this is true. That's what they're saying here. So this is um, Another one that accepts, and if you see a review of the scientific literature, this wasn't one single isolated study. This reviewed as many studies as they can, um, and what they find is uh, cancer causing, uh, worse than smoking, um, you know, elements of food. So um, let me see. Uh, let's go through. Getting good comments here, folks. I'm going to get to them in a second. So boom. Here's another one, a vegetarian dietary pattern as a nutrient-dense approach to weight management, an analysis of the National Health and Nutrition Examination Survey going from 1999 to 2004. So basically what they saw, the objective to compare dietary quality of vegetarians, non-vegetarians, and dieters, and to test a hypothesis that a vegetarian diet would not compromise nutrient intake when used to manage body weight. Conclusions. These findings suggest vegetarian diets are nutrient dense, consistent with dietary guidelines, and could be recommended for weight management without compromising diet quality. The argument meat eaters always want to get is there's somehow you're missing something in the diet, and yet none of the research reflects that. Um, so that's uh, particularly troublesome to me. Going back to another study from the Journal of American Dietetic Association, 2008. A very low-fat vegan diet, low-fat, not low-carb, low-fat, boom, shakalaka laka boom, boom. Increases intake of protective dietary factors and decreases intake of pathogenic dietary factors. Abstract, there is increasing evidence dietary factors in plant-based diets are important in the prevention of chronic disease. This study examined protective elements that you can read there of dietary factors in a very low-fat vegan diet. Um, and then it talks about uh, the protective factors um, and things that are only available uh, in, um, in uh, plant-based foods. So you can look that one up yourself. There it is there, the Journal of American Dietetic Association, 2008, uh, February 2008. The Journal of Internal Medicine, volume 281. I just took a snapshot, potential health hazards of eating red meat. 
and on and on it goes. Here we go, high carb diet, boom. From the Journal of the Florida Medical Association, fiber is the portion of plant cells not digested in human small intestine. Benefits of fiber consumption have been documented in treatment of obesity and obesity-related risk factors. You wanna lose weight? What are we talking about? Let's get to it. High fiber intake can be achieved by adding high fiber foods or supplements to the diet. Combination of water soluble, water insoluble fibers offer the greatest health and weight control benefits. A high fiber weight reducing diet, beneficial as part of a lifestyle program of weight management. In the last few sessions, what have I showed you over and over again? Pictures of my clients that have lost massive amounts of weight. How and why? Carb based diet. Boom, shakalaka, laka, boom, boom. High fiber. Where does fiber come from? Plant-based foods. You know that people actually think there's fiber in red meat and chicken breasts. It's amazing how ignorant people are. It's not about protein, folks. It's about fiber. Carbs-based diets, rules. Fiber only comes from plants. What is the conclusion here? A high-fiber, weight-reducing diet is most beneficial as part of a lifestyle modification program uh, for weight loss. So we need to get real about getting real. I'm going to start getting to your clients. Got to bring Andy back into the conversation. I'm sure you guys are sick of me pontificating by now. So uh, any comments on that, brother, before I get to the comments? Yeah. Uh, speaking about getting lean, I mean, when you go vegan, I mean, you get lean without trying to get lean, basically. Like it, that, that, that's just essentially what I've... Uh, what, what I've noticed definitely with my physique, um, I mean, it's just the satiety to all the meals is just, uh, it, it, it's great. It, it, it's, it's like you're not even dieting compared to when I was eating things like egg whites and, and chicken breasts and things like that. If you follow like a, a whole food approach too, to the vegan yeah. thing, but that, yeah, that's I the mean, thing, right? I'm, I'm not talking about vegan faux foods or anything like that, right? So yeah, if you're shopping and, and you're buying, you know, black bean uh, tortilla chips and you're, yeah. you know, you're, I mean, I mean, I, hopefully we don't have to explain that to people yeah. at this point, uh, you know. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I what, what I was going to say with all that is, yeah, the, the whole food plant-based. But I got to do a webinar when I return from vacation, I think, on stretch receptors in the stomach because a lot of this has to do with that. But Andy's right. I've been only on it a while, and I keep having to upregulate my portion sizes. Yeah. I mean – now, my salad size at dinner, I might as well jump into a vat of salad and eat my way out. Uh, it's just like, you know, like uh, the bowls keep getting bigger and bigger. And, uh, you know, because, <laughs> we understand, because we understand how to read biofeedback, yeah. we understand when and how to increase portion sizes accordingly. So uh, it's very, very important. Uh, let me get to some of the comments here. Um well, uh, well, um, two, two, two. Uh, wow, there's a lot of comments came in. So um, let me just see here. Um, Alejandro. Oh, wait, I'll get down to here. Rick Romano. I've replaced three of my five meals from flesh to beans. Uh, lentils, chickpeas, actually stronger in the gym, more energy. Actually got way leaner. Sooner or later, I think I'll have all five meals vegan based. Boom. Way to go, Rick. Yeah, I mean, that seems to be the common feedback I'm getting from people. Um, all kinds of biomarkers are toward uh, better health, better cosmetic appearance, uh, you know, just as good or better performance in the gym. I've yet to have someone write me who say it's trending the other way. Uh, and Andy, you you can attest to that as well, correct? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Strength is still great. Um, sharper abs, energy. I mean, I just keep eating more and more carbs because, you know, yeah. according to my biofeedback, um, I need them. Right. So yeah, cause my you portions can keep going flatten, up. You're flattening out, filling out all. Yeah. Those yeah. So Alejandro's just saying, assuming a good metabolism. Yeah, well, that's a, that's assuming something pretty big there. Alejandro uh, is going vegan still advisable with someone during a bulk up. Well, it would certainly be different. So that's a very good question. Uh, it would certainly be a little more difficult, but you would have to focus more on the starches and the calorie dense foods like, um, you know, seeds and things like that uh, and shakes and things like that could certainly be done. I mean, there's a few uh, Olympic lifters and strong men who are vegan who are, you know, hefty to say the least. So no. it can definitely be done. Um, but that's a very good point. But yeah, um, I think 
choosing Pasta. to go vegan is one way of actually optimizing your metabolism that I may, I should have considered more before, um, you know, uh, but I didn't have the evidence uh, in front of me in terms of real world application. But it seems to me what we're talking about um, is that going vegan is a way to optimize metabolism pretty quickly because that's what Andy's describing. That's what I'm describing. Uh, you want to fill in a gap on that, buddy, before I continue? Uh, no, no, no. I, yeah. All right. Cherry's Let's just continue. asking if anyone has suggestions for the best bean lentil options to start with. Uh, she'd love the resources, the texture of many of my beans, baby steps. I know Ange makes a, a, a lentil loaf, um, you know, um, sort of a, like a meatloaf, but with lentils, um, other people have sent me, I mean, geez, I should just do a show on the recipes that people have sent me. I mean, I don't cook. So do you have anything right there off the top of your head? I know you cook, buddy. So you got anything for Sherry, um, a suggestion? Uh, which on the best bean lentil option. Um, I just I, wait to cook. Yeah, I I definitely love my beans, chickpeas, and and rice meal. Um, I'm not I haven't really got big in, in, into the the lentils yet, but other than um, just uh, you know beans in a can that that type of thing, but I haven't got into the into the brown lentils and all that kind of stuff yet. So there's so many more options. I mean, that's the other thing too. I mean, it's just a whole world of of new options. Like I, I just recently got into millet. That, that's a new starch for me and it's it's really good too yeah um, i think the best analogy i can use is it reminds me and i'm going to age myself here the younger people won't relate to this but reminds me of the movie of wizard of oz where dorothy you know goes wakes up from black and white and opens the door in munchkin land and it's, everything's in color suddenly like yeah, uh, yeah like you're saying there's just so many new options that you never considered before as an omnivore but now there's all these like you know, yeah, it's a, it's a flavor, expo uh, flavor explosion too. Right. So, yeah. Uh, Steven's just saying, thank God beer's vegan. I'm with you on that one. I'm about to hit my uh, vacation, Steven. And you know, that's what the uh, majority of my carving up will be. Uh, Margo's just saying, fortunately not experienced negative feedback from my peers, but I've had a doctor frown upon it. She recommended I stick with lean meats and more fruits and veggies. Hmm. Yeah, well, doctors aren't exactly at the forefront of nutrition research. Uh, Lydia's just saying something I said made her laugh out loud on the on the weight room floor. I have that effect on women, Lydia. I make them laugh for no apparent reason. Um, Tom's just saying Joe Rogan is follower of Rob Wolf. Yeah, I know that. I uh, one of the lectures that I watched there, Tom, was the two of them, and like I said they were talking as if they were debunking something and they were talking in circular nonsense. It was unbelievable to me that people were like, you go get them guys when they weren't saying anything. Um, I mean, God forbid either one of these guys would invite uh, Michael Greger on their, on one of their podcasts or something. They would eat these guys lunch for them. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe not, maybe not because they eat meat, but um so Chen Yu is just saying a lot of the arguments here is that you may have positive effects in beginning on vegan, but over the long term, you'll see detrimental effects. The Actually, the lifelong research at, at vegans is actually quite the opposite. Again, vegans live longer. They live better in their later years. Um, so, yeah. So um, Stephen's just reminding us that uh, one of McDougal's famous quotes is the fat you eat is the fat you wear. And the thing there, Stephen, is I was saying to Andy the other day when when we have our weekly coffee meeting where we rant to each other about the nature of people, um, I was telling Andy that uh, how it's come full circle. Because when I started coaching competitors and I was known as the trainer of champions because my people look completely different than everyone else, what was my approach? high carb and as low fat as we could get it. Um, and then I started getting criticized because the whole wave of, of the zone diet came in and then the whole Atkins nonsense. And then, so all of a sudden I was considered just old school. I didn't understand what was going on and stuff, even though my people still excelled and my clients still looked the best and they could still actually function. Um, and now all these years later, what are we back to from the research and the actual experts who do nothing but study this day in and day out for hours a day for 20, 30, 40, 50 years at a time? We're back to high carb, low fat uh, being the way to go. So uh, I'll sharing, gladly up, up my carbs and, and lower my fat any day, too. So, I mean, 
it's carbs yeah. are so much more satisfying. I mean, like I, I'd rather eat a bigger portion of oatmeal than, you know, than, than, uh, have, you know, more, more fats in it, right? Like, like seeds and things like that. So. Yeah. I'm loving it all. Um, yeah. Sherry's just asking about recipes. So Sherry, maybe if you are willing to part with an Instagram account, people can send it there. You can probably, Ange could probably have a few recipes for you. If you reached out to her at, uh, I think her Instagram handle is um, Ange and Maple Leaf, all one word. Uh, you would find, uh, and I'm sure she has some, and I'm sure many people have some because people are sending it to me left and right. And Monica's just saying, made an amazing lentil soup on the weekend, a uh, chock full of veggies. I love the lentils on their own. I, I I don't know why, but it's just, and the black beans. I mean, I'm just, I don't even put anything on them. I'm just really, really enjoying that. So, um, and just, just saying, uh, put a six bean mix with black beans and made seven bean mix with salad and rice um, uh, when she landed here in Canada the other day, just for a quick meal. Uh, we put all that. So um, Tiffany's just saying she's been watching my webinars from day one. Can I just say you even look leaner? Uh, I wish you would say I look more handsome, but I'll settle for that, Tiffany. I mean, you know, people, when they tell me I look good, I always say I trade it to be good looking. But I uh, can't have everything. But uh, yeah, I've, I've noticed people are saying that. But that happens this time of year as well because um, I tend to be uh, part polar bear in the winter and hibernate and don't move a whole lot. Uh, this time of year, I get out and go for my walks and stuff. So uh, Laura Lee's just saying, love food and meat. How does one just stop eating something they really enjoy without feeling punished? That's the thing, Laura Lee. That's a, a, an amazing, fantastic Perfect question. And I'll tell you, in my transition at first, and I was telling Andy this, my favorite yearly thing once a year when I land in Aruba, I unpack, I walk over to Ruth Chris Steakhouse, I had the big cowboy ribeye, yada, yada, yada. And I kept telling myself, that'll be my last time. And that'll be, this is like three months ago, uh, you know, then it became, ah, maybe I'll go to Ruth Chris, maybe I won't. And now that tradition is just gone. I mean, after weeks of doing this, I have no desire. Uh, last Sunday, I had a big um, veggie burger, double burger. I had sliced tomato. I had mayo, ketchup, mustard, relish. Uh, I had vegan cheese. I forgot to take a picture of it because it looked like something on a TV commercial from Hardee's or something. It was just awesome. But uh, I'm, I'm just... Um, yeah, feeling de punished or feeling deprived, I think that's just the creeping in of the North American diet mentality there. Um, it's something like, I'm not, not like I suddenly don't love meat. It's not like, you know, but I don't want to taste it anymore. I know that. Um, I don't look at the chicken section in the grocery store anymore and think, well, I'd really like to get me some of that. I, it's just, I don't know. It's just a, and I think that's a mindset thing. And I think it's easier for Andy and myself because we don't suffer the North American diet mentality where no. deprivation and denial and that kind of thing mm -hmm. enters into it. Go ahead, buddy. And then I'll get back to finish. Yeah. I, I, I was just really ready to, to, to make the switch. I mean, um, I'm an animal lover. I mean, I, I've been an animal lover for 35 years and, and ate meat too, but I, I think something just, really clicked. I mean, obviously you can't deny the research, but you know, there, there's definitely a, an a emotional side to it as well. I mean, anyone that's yeah, ever seen. Off. Yeah. Hold what's off. that? Hold, hold off. off. That hold off. I'm, I'm right. going to finish. I'm going to finish with that one because okay. I think one of the reasons people are offended, it's in the last slides. So we'll just hold off there, but okay. Yeah, cause, sure. Cause I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of people who say they don't love animals. Right. You're not going to get a lot of people who say, well, no. I really hate dogs. So, you know, like, screw them. Let's eat them. But um, we've, you know, we've always like, made it like a like a division, though, of what we consider pets and what we consider. Well, let's get there. Hold off to the last slide and, and I'll get there because there, there's a few things on that that I want. to. So let me bring up uh, just put you in the lobby for a sec. I'll bring up the, the last few slides for everybody uh, and then we can. Uh, finish this with a bang. Great comments, everybody. Laura Lee, great, great comment. I mean, I think I could do a whole webinar just, just on that. I think, I think we could look at that and, um, you know, take that to how people can get their mind around, uh, things like that. So I think that that's really important, uh, something we can look at, uh, down the road. So, uh, so just finishing off, 
uh, my point is get real about getting real. What's wrong? Why are people's noses out of joint? What's wrong about delivering this message passionately to those who can benefit from knowing it, who can stop being confused by paleo nonsense and keto idiocy and the rest of it and realize where the research really lies, what the conclusions are, why they're there, uh, et cetera, et cetera. You can transform your body and your life. This is the business that Andy and I are in. So why wouldn't we deliver this message frequently and passionately? Um, I don't know any other way to be uh, with the way um, I am and how I present. So one of the things I will say, though, is the old saying, um, if passion drives you, then let then at least let reason steer the wheel. And I think that's what... Uh, um, it was the big factor in in convincing me uh, on that one. So, um, you know, uh, what what bothers me is people said, well, what did you have health problems? Like, uh, why did you go? You know, no, my blood tests were already clean. Like I said, I could not ignore the research being a person who believes in research. So started following it. It was easy to follow. It wasn't a sacrifice. Um but at the same time, what bothers me is people asking me, well, you know, okay, you're a smart guy. Show us all these reasons you say that you couldn't deny anymore. And now I sunk myself into scheduling Facebook posts for two, three, four months. I think they're scheduled right into July. And I can't tell you how disappointed I am that I put all that work into the research. And I'll do a, a Facebook post practically every every night. Uh, from now through to July and starting a month ago for someone with 28,000 followers to get seven likes and no shares. When you guys asked for it, you guys wanted the research, show us why. And I show why and people are like, nah, you know, I can't share that. My people won't like that. Um, you know, uh, I don't, this is how ignorance gets spread. This is how misinformation gets spread. But, you know, the defensiveness, I think when we give people the research, and the experience, and then there's a whole beneath the surface elephant in the room that no one wants to talk about, and that is factory farmed animals that Andy is going to get to. And I don't want to get crazy here because it's going to take the lectures and the points of the six day vegan diet in a different direction. But what Paul McCartney said all those years ago is truer now more than ever. Uh, even though this is a conversation for another time, uh, for those of you who don't know. I think this is the reality behind much of the defensiveness of omnivores uh, um, with people who have gone vegan. And Paul McCartney said years ago, his wife was a very famous vegan. Uh, if slaughterhouses had glass walls, everyone would be vegetarian. So I think that's an important distinction to point out and welcome people's comments on that. But there's even more to that as well. I'm going to bring Andy back into the conversation. So I was having this conversation with Andy at coffee and the whole element of cultural inclusions and cultural imprints. There's places where cows are sacred and they can't imagine killing a cow. Well, I was telling Andy the other day on, and I won't send people there, but there is a YouTube video where there is a yearly tradition celebration in an Asian country. I won't say which one. Uh, try not to get too upset here. Where they torture dogs live and then they skin them alive while the dogs are screaming, yelping. Um, and for them, that is culturally i mean the people in the video are laughing the people are in the video are enjoying the torture element of this it's culturally instituted in them and you know i i didn't mean it but i said to andy imagine that was bob and it just when i said it it just yeah you started tearing up yeah yeah i got all teary yeah. and, and so the cultural element I think we want to deny because like you said earlier, buddy, I love animals. Well, a lot of meat eaters get offended by that statement because they're going to say, yeah, don't, don't tell me I don't love animals, yeah. but you know what? That's because you're in denial of what Paul McCartney said. If you actually had to witness their slaughter and their factory farming yeah. from forced pregnancies to the way they're penned, you might feel differently about 
you know, not compartmentalizing that statement. And uh, funny, going from the dog celebration and torture and skinning them alive and all that really hard to even say stuff. So Angie and I just got back from shopping and we're at Bulk Barn and this stuff, this new trend is so popular, it's even at Bulk Barn. Well, what they had today on the other end of that scale was they had uh, crickets, cricket food for protein. So they ground up crickets into uh, yeah, powder, yeah, put awesome. it in protein bars. Uh, they had different flavors. So along with pumpkin seeds, et cetera. And that really is the future, I think, of that kind of um, that kind of eating uh, uh, agenda. So, um, but anyway, go ahead, buddy, because I cut you off when you initially brought up, you know, the I love. No, animals. no. I mean, basically, I, I think as humans, we we feel we have, uh, you know, dominion over all other species just because, you know, we have the power to. Right. So uh, who, who am I to say what what animals we treat ethically and, and which ones we don't. Right. I mean, uh, Something just clicked with me. I'm, I'm just, I'm, I'm just done with with meat. Even though I, I did enjoy it for 35 years, I, I did love animals. I, I mean, it's not a put down to anyone that chooses to eat meat. Uh, I understand that, you know, that uh, that you too can love animals as well. But there's, there's definitely uh, an element of of denial there because if you did see some of these videos that that you can watch on YouTube, I mean, they'll they'll turn you white. Like they're morbid disgusting like it, it's basically like a an auschwitz you know concentration camp for animals right so it, and yeah and people you know i mean they won't watch i mean even lydia's just saying in the comment section she won't go and watch that i don't blame you i wouldn't want to watch no it. no i mean yeah, I, I, mean, I wouldn't force in, you'd have but to there's force something in to. that uh, what i'm saying is you know, uh, the reality behind much of the defensiveness is something, it's an elephant in the room no one wants to talk about. Sure. So I'm giving a couple of examples, but, you know, no one wants to go there. No one really needs to see that, or do they? I don't know. But, you know, it's a conversation for another time. But I think that's part of the thing where people get offensive because they're like, you're saying you love animals and you're saying yeah. I don't. And we're saying, well, no, we're just not compartmentalizing that statement anymore. Uh, you know, so, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just one of those things. I'll, I'll leave it at that. So, uh, yeah. Lydia, I'm not sure what Lydia, what you mean, you're saying you think Facebook has something to do with it. The reach we all used to have has changed. Well, I know Facebook has choked off my reach to a point where, uh, it's really affected my business uh, in a negative way. Not much I can do about it, but, um, it is sad when I see, you know, like I like I was telling Andy the other day, a popular bo online bodybuilder who was giving advice on insulin sensitivity that made no sense with no research, no academic background, just just an off the cuff remark, and, yeah. And it was just a more of a Joe Rogan kind of uh, nonsense. So um, you know, very very weird and strange and and everything else. So I wanted to do this webinar to sort of balance it out between the one I did on uh, breaking vegan and militant vegans telling us we weren't vegan enough. Um, but I really should have done this one first because really the reaction of uh, meat eaters um, was a lot more pronounced. You know, uh, like I said, I had clients writing Andy and writing Ange saying, well, you know, I don't want to go vegan. Like, you know, what's he saying? Well, I'm not saying anything. I'm, you know, people, People would say, just like, um, um, I don't want to make sure I say uh, this person's name correctly. Um, and I still want to talk about uh, Laura Lee's honest comment, too, about loving meat. I think that's important, too. we got to get to. But like Chun Yi said uh, earlier, you know, people, you know, I've been in the industry a long time. A lot of people trust the voice that I have, the experience that I have, the no bull crap attitude that I've taken. I could have been easily a multimillionaire had I chosen to sell supplements. So there is that element of wanting to reach people with no nonsense, academic, evidence-based reasons why, but when people aren't receiving that, it sure makes me wonder why I'm putting all the work into presenting it. Andy, you know how much work goes into it. Oh, um, absolutely. So, you know, I wish people would share more uh, of the stuff when it comes out. So, um, yeah, so, uh, you know, um, 
uh, Alejandra, I don't want to get into this too much, but there's really no such thing as an ethically raised beef, fowl, et cetera. Um, yeah. they, that's a whole other, you'd have to be doing the mountains of research that we do on this. And I don't want to touch that right now. It's too sensitive. It's too political. It's too emotionally charged. Um, and the, you know, uh, the, the environmental stress too is, is another uh, thing to consider as well, right? Like the, the beef industry, I mean, you want to talk about CO2 emissions. I mean, that, that pretty much, you know, takes the cake by a landslide. I mean, it, yeah, and <laughs> one of the things I was going to leave the webinar, the, one of the notes I was going to leave the webinar on is, isn't it funny how what's good for the body is good for the planet? Yeah. Um, so it's funny. You take care of yourself, um, you know, better as an individual. You also end up taking it's care good for of everyone. Planet. Yeah. No. planet better as well so and again that's where we start sound like we're pontificating and but that's really what the evidence says so i don't want to no. like i don't want to make it emotionally charged that's what the evidence dictates that has no bearing on why you or you or i went vegan i want to keep it to the the fitness expert metabolism expert element of it that is yeah, just I, a I smarter, agree too. better wiser thing to do for disease prevention, for weight loss, for weight control, uh, all those things together. So I'll give you the last word, buddy, and then we'll get out of here. Uh, I'll say one thing. When, when people generally start to, to make the switch to being a vegan, I, I find they, they always try to like replace all the animal protein they were eating with some sort of you know vegan source, which you just need to get rid of that mentality completely. Like forget about counting grams, just eat real food, eat real whole food. Don't worry about eating. Like, I, I, I don't come anywhere near right now the amount of protein I was eating when I, when I was eating egg whites, chicken breasts, and all that kind of things, you know, from, from a grams perspective. So I would say that's one, you know, one of the most frequent questions I get is people, you know, oh, what, how, how do I eat this, this many grams of protein eating vegan? Well, that, that's not the point of going vegan. Like, just throw that whole mentality out the window because it, it's not going to serve you anymore. Yeah, good point. Good point. Yeah. It's a whole it's a whole shift in thinking. I, yeah, I, I think I told you I did a quick I did a quick uh, guesstimate just for kicks and giggles the other day when someone asked me about protein and I think I was just under or just over a shade over 40 grams. Yeah, I'm I'm probably and in the same so neighborhood too. Where it used to be like 1 gram of protein per pound of body weight. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and you know, you of that stuff. So you're so diligent so, trying to, you know, hit that number every day, right? So Yeah. And Steve is just saying that that was a great point, Andy. So let's end on that point. Uh, we're going to come back at you. Uh, I don't know. Um, I'll probably just do Facebook live uh, while I'm away on vacation. Um, I might leave uh, something for Andy to do live. I'm not sure yet. We haven't ironed that out, but I'm definitely away within the next couple of days. Need to uh, reboot, recharge, re-energize. But having said that, I'm inviting everyone to tag along on my social media as we do the vegan vacation. I'm deliberately not taking food with me of any kind to show um, how it can be done because I get so often from people, uh, I travel too much to stick to a diet. And I, you know, but that's a choice in thinking, whatever, if you tell yourself that's true, that's going to be your experience. I'm going into this uh, fully knowing I'm not going to have any problem sticking to it. And I really don't think at this point, that not going to Ruth Chris is going to feel like a sacrifice. I won't know till I get there, but right now I have uh, no desire on that. So that's it for us for this week. And uh, stay tuned, and we'll be coming at you with more stuff. Um, I think uh, last week, the Aerobic Myth uh, podcast was one of the biggest in terms of interest. Um, so it's amazing that uh, people still can't get past um, – you know, pop culture folklore when it comes to what they think knowledge is in nutrition and exercise. So we'll do more exercise stuff as well. But uh, that's it for us today. We got a lot off our chest and hopefully you guys will uh, start to consider what you're considering in terms of letting into your minds and hearts about uh, the way you live, how you eat, what you want to do and how you want to do it and all those things. So we're just going to keep presenting the evidence as it as it exists. Um, and then, um, you know, let you guys decide for yourself. We're not anyone's food Nazi, that's for sure. But we certainly have a viewpoint and there's nothing wrong with that. And there's nothing wrong with presenting something with passion. Um, 
this particularly if you follow me because you're not going to get an alternative to that um i'm not apathetic about things so um you know that is how it is you can't teach uh young dog old tricks so uh we'll leave it at that and uh we will talk to you all uh, in the future stay tuned for a vegan vacation with pictures and updates and things like that but uh, we'll see you all in a couple of weeks <laughs>